Hello everyone and welcome back to tutorial 2 of the SPFX development. In a previous tutorial, we went ahead and set up a project and we ran the project such that it can be rendered in a SharePoint online environment in a workbench. So that being said, the first thing that I think is very important is to know the project structure. So let's start from the top to the down. So .vs code is a folder containing settings and configurations related to VS code. To be very honest, you would not use .vs code folder a lot or in fact, I have never used it. The config folder. Now this is an important folder. We saw that how serve.json will help us set up a workbench on a page, right? Similarly, there are other files that are very, very important out here, such as config.json. It tells you various configurations, localization resources, etc. And what is the entry point of your project, right? Understand this. This is TypeScript. When you compile it, it goes ahead and gets into a JavaScript file, right? So the config file, then if you're using Azure storage, you'll configure here. How are you going to go ahead and package it? Um, we are going to have a full tutorial on this, but this is the SPPKG file. This is the client side package that you will be uploading into your SharePoint and using it. So this is where it is configured, right? And then you have the SAS schema. You have serve.json and then you have the manifest if you're using any CDN, etc. The next folder is the dist folder. The dist folder is usually generated when you build the project. The lib folder. This stores the transpiled JavaScript. So as I told you, the project is in TypeScript. All the files that we are going to work with are going to be in TS file or TSX files. But this will transpile it into a JavaScript. This is auto-generated during the build process. Node files. The node files basically contain the install dependencies. And when you hit npm install, this folder comes into picture. Now, if you are going to use the mermaid npm install, it will also install a mermaid module here. Typically used to release version of the project. It has various folders such as assets, such as storing of images. Then you have component dependencies, likely contains reports, logs, dependencies, etc. Manifest files are required for deployment. So this is what it is. SRC file, the most important folder where you'll do the SPFX development. The web part folder. The web part folder has various files. The main file that we are going to work with is JS Mermaid TS file. This is the file where we are going to write code. The Teams folder. The Teams folder is used for Microsoft Teams integration. If you can use the same SPFX web part in Microsoft Teams. The Temp folder is temporary folder. ES Lint RC folder is the ES Lint configuration, defines the coding rules that helps you catch errors in JavaScript, Git ignore if you're going to go ahead and push it in a GitHub repo. That's where you go ahead and say what to ignore. Uh, NPM ignore specifies the folder that needs to be in that needs to be excluded from the NPM. Uh, yo dot yo rc dot json is used for yeoman which generates the tool gulf files defines bundling package log.json is the packages that are being used. In fact, package.json is where you can find all the files, all the dependencies in your project. If we go ahead and install, for example, mermaid, you will also see it here and I'll show you that later. So readme file is the documentation file and ts config file is the TypeScript configuration file. Now that you understand the files, let me go ahead and dock my workbench and my code, VS code side by side. Okay, so on my left is my workbench and on here, on my right is VS code. 
as I told you the most important folder is the source folder and this is where we are going to write some code so we'll talk about the methods in a bit but before that I'm going to say gulp serve I just want to show you something in real time I'll add this web part right this web part is getting added And here, my friends, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change some text out here. I'm going to remove this text and I'll say, Welcome to the tutorial by Clavin Fernandez. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and remove the second line, the second paragraph. And if you see, this line should change and this line should disappear and I'm going to say control S right and I'm just going to refresh this particular SPFX web part page uh, okay and didn't do it so let's refresh again I try to load it again so if you if it doesn't reflect always do empty cache and hard reload and here my friends you see that you are getting the updated text so there are two things to learn from this first is that you can real time if you have multiple screens you can real time see if how your web part is getting updated visually and if it does not render you need to do empty cache and hard reload so that being said i'll go back into my code editor and we are going to go ahead and start building our project so as I told you, the file is the TS file. It's under the source folder, very important. So first thing, it tells me that I have few dependencies. So it's importing few dependencies. So this is the render method. Uh, this is the initialization method. This gives you information about the environment. This tells you on what happened if the theme is changed. Uh, we might not go ahead and use this um, then it tells me the data version and then comes the property pane the property pane now what exactly is the property pane if i click on this web part and click on edit this is the property pane now if i go back to my actual web part which is here click on edit and I have a property pane out here which is multi-line text and that's what we want to create so let's start with building a property pane so first and foremost the get property pane configuration method is usually where we have the property panes right uh, every SPFX web part includes the property pane you need to understand that that's the first thing if I scroll up and if I go to line number 13, it tells me that there is an interface known as IJ Mermaid Web Part Props and it has a description which is a type of string. And that is what I'm using out here. So understand this, a property pane can be of type single line of text that is string. It can be a toggle, it can be a multi-select, it can be a hyperlink, it can be a grid, it can also be your custom control, right? In this tutorial, what we want to go ahead and do, we want to have a property chain which can accommodate multiple lines of text. That's the most important bit out here. So what I'm going to do is, first thing, I'll click on this so I know where to paste my code at least then I can just say add another property so I have added another property the property pane it's na named as mermaid settings uh, it has a label it is of type multi-line and it has five rows so at this point if I save my project and if I go back here as you know my browser is being a little bit difficult with me today perfect so finally I have the web part or the moment setting and the multi-line text out here so here my friends we have implemented the property pane I think we will 
continue in the next tutorial where we go ahead and build the SPFX application with the mermaid diagram and also set up the logic for the on property change or on property pane field changed method. Right? I hope this quick tutorial is informative. Thank you for your time and see ya in the next tutorial.